Good morning, church. Uh, welcome to another devotional. I wanted to read uh, this morning from 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 8. It's the story of Elisha and the Shunammite woman. One day Elisha went on to Shunam, where a wealthy woman lived who urged him to eat some food. So whenever he passed that way, he would turn into there to eat food. And she said to her husband, Behold, now I know that this is a holy man of God who is continually passing our way. Let us make a small room on the roof of the walls and put there for him a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp, so that whenever he comes to us, he can go in there. You know, there's many things that I wish that God would do in my life. I ask for them in prayers. I wish for them as the deepest longing of my heart to change circumstances, to, to change people in my life, to act in a certain way or to do certain things. And what we read in the story is one of the principles of how do we make sure or how do we um, make it so that God's actions have room to act in our life. You know, the Shunammite woman, she wanted a man of God to stay in her place. She didn't want anything from Elisha. She didn't need a miracle. She didn't need anything. She just wanted to create space for a man of God. As a result of that, he actually comes back to her a while later after they do this thing for him. And he says, what is it that you desire? What can I give you? What can God give you? And she says, I need nothing. He says, I'll, I'll give you a son regardless. I will give you a blessing. I will give you something. You see, the thing is, we can't force God to do anything in our life. Jesus said that God's spirit is like the wind. You can't tell it where it comes from or where it goes. It is something that moves all around us. But the thing is that God is ultimately not under our control, but there are things that we can do in our lives that make sure that that wind of the Holy Spirit, when it blows through our life, that there is space for it to act. And the only way we can do that is by making sure there is room in our life for God. I think one of the reasons that God mandates Sabbath is because that rest gives a place for God to act in our lives. The reason why Elisha did this thing for that Shunammite woman is because there was a place for him to act in. It's the same thing for us. In our lives, they're often so busy. They're so full of things. They're so full of actions and deeds that we don't have space for God to work. You know, we're in the long haul at this point. I mean, you, you've got a little bit of a break with spring break, but we're going all the way to like Thanksgiving till we have a decent chunk of vacation time. Maybe in summer you'll have a break if you go to school. But that's it. We're, we're here. How do you make space for God in that time? How do you make space for God in a time when every single day you wake up and you've got things to do? The Shunammite woman did not force Elijah to do anything. She even didn't force him to take that room. All she did is say, let us prepare that room and let us offer it to him. And he took that offer. The story continues that she was granted a child. In the same way, God moves in our lives if we give him space. So I encourage you, as we start out this new year, make sure that your life has space for God. Make sure that your days are not filled with to the brim with activities and, act, and things to do and work and school, but that you make a place for God to act in your life, a time to act, a location to act, a willingness, even if it's in your mind, for God to act on it. Amen and God bless.